I mean, that's the goal. Everything looks like it's good. But all it takes is um, rich, careful actions. All right, going live. All right, I'll go ahead and call to order the regular meeting of the City Council for September 7th, 2021. Um, I spoke with uh, Council Member Ken Saunders, who will not be able to make it uh, this evening for health-related reasons, uh, but he's with us in spirit, uh, and maybe even on Facebook, I'm not quite sure. Uh, invocation and Pledge of Allegiance will be Council Member Gardner. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, and uh, we are uh, blessed and thankful to be able to be here tonight to do the city's business, Father. And as elected officials, Lord, uh, we should consider it an honor um, that the residents have put us here to be able to represent their interests, Lord. And we just pray for wisdom tonight as we deal with the city's matters, and uh, we ask that we do all things um, that would benefit this city as best as possible, Lord. God, we want to uh, ask for uh, prayers of, of health for uh, Council Member Saunders and uh, the issues that he's dealing with right now, Lord. We just pray that you give him the strength that he needs to recover, Father. And Lord, we also are, are thankful for all those that serve this city day in and day out, uh, especially those that are on the front lines each and every day keeping our city safe and taking care of us. We're so thankful for their service and what they do for our community, God. We just ask that we will do all things uh, tonight in accordance with your will, Father, and that you will bless us by uh, allowing us to serve someone each and every day in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. All right, the next item is the um, um, special guest announcements, the Mayor's Employee of the Month, which will be going to Officer Shamika Nesbitt. Come on down. I've got a proclamation to read here. Are we on? We're on. All right, this is a proclamation naming Officer Shamika Nesbitt as the Mayor's Employee of the Month for August 2021 and declaring September 10th, 2021 to be Officer Shamika Nesbitt Day in the city of Maumel. Whereas Officer Shamika Nesbitt began her career with the Maumel Police Department in November 2020, quickly demonstrating integrity, vigilance, and compassion in her efforts to protect and serve our community. Whereas on August 10th, 2021, Officer Nesbitt responded to a medical emergency and as the first to arrive on scene found the victim bleeding heavily from his leg. Whereas Officer Nesbitt acted quickly and capably by applying a tourniquet to the victim's leg while calmly and clearly communicating with responding personnel, most likely saving the victim's life. And whereas Officer Nesbitt's selfless actions prove her value as a member of the Mummel Police Department and a tremendous asset to our community. Now, therefore, I, Caleb Norris, Mayor of Maumelle, on the 7th day of September, do hereby declare Officer Shamika Nesbitt to be the Mayor's Employee for the month uh, for August 2021, and hereby proclaim September 10th, 2021, to be Officer Shamika Nesbitt Day in the city of Maumelle. So. I 
I'm sure I ruined your picture by being in it, but thank no, you very I, much. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like you came with your own little fan club here. Uh, well, you've just added to that again. Thank you for your service to the community. Next order of business is approval of the minutes. Y'all received a copy of the August 16th regular meeting minutes in the packet. If there's uh, no discussion, I'd entertain a motion to adopt those minutes. I've got a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item is public comment. I have two public comment cards on agenda items, so we will uh, call on those folks when we get to that agenda item. And we will move on to a department report uh, by Scott Grummer, Director of Planning and Permits. Scott, come on down. Can you hear me okay? <clears throat> Scott Grummer, Director of Planning and Permits. Well, first of all, it's been a while since I've done public speaking, so I'm not that bad. I'm not that real great at it, so please give me a little bit of uh, patience as we work through this 30-minute uh, uh, presentation. Is that right? I think we have a, a agreed-upon time at which I'm muting your mic. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, before I get started, I would like to um, state that uh, I'd like to uh, thank the mayor for uh, the benchmarking trip that we took to uh, Northwest Arkansas this past week. Um, along with other senior staff and cedar, uh, city leaders, uh, we uh, biked many trails uh, and experienced the game-changing technology of motor-assisted bikes, which I really uh, enjoyed riding for the fleet moment that I had it. And there, and, and there, the ability to get even the most unexperienced biker up steep grades. So that was pretty amazing to watch. Now, I learned the importance of public trails, uh, their accessibility to all, and their impact on economic development and a healthy uh, city growth. And lastly, I uh, brought home ideas and innovations that we hope to implement to assist us in creating a better uh, Maumelle for everyone. So, Tina, you can take the next slide. Um, so, first off, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, to City Council for, uh, and the Mayor uh, for allowing us to combine the Departments of Planning and Permits. Um, it's allowed us the ability to change up uh, responsibilities and uh, make it more efficient within our department in uh, communications as well as uh, seeing things done. So I just wanted to show you our team, which is Jason Lyon. Uh, he brought in some GIS specialists uh, as well as some planning. And then uh, Lydia, we uh, combined her both in permits and planning and have allowed to stretch her across the department. So um, slide three. Um, so just kind of a touch base on uh, residential building permits. Uh, just FYI, the uh, Maumelle median home value is approximately $250,000, uh, which is above the Arkansas median of $149,000, but below the national median of $293,000. Uh, so in this slide, you'll notice that uh, the, the, uh, the lower uh, number is the cumulative for August, uh, up to August, which shows the residential value permitted up to that point is $24,139,000 total. Um, that is just slightly... Uh, behind the total annual of 24 million nine hundred from last year so we're about to exceed last year's total cumulative uh, value on homes so housing uh, construction has been increasing uh, quite a bit um, so uh, the next slide uh, so when you look at this one the total number of housing uh, units that we have produced uh, year to date in August is 69 uh, again, with the average home value of 349,000 per home. Now that is uh, exceedingly higher than the uh, the median uh, home value, which is 250. So we're building bigger, more expensive houses. Just FYI, uh, and the numbers on that is consistent with the uh, census, which showed a growth of 2,000, uh, approximately 2,000 from our uh, last uh, uh, census. That comes out to about average around 70 to 75 units per, per year. So um, with that, you've got uh, new subdivisions that are coming in, such as, uh, which is almost built out, Carnahan Village, 
uh, it's one of the uh, fastest growing neighborhoods and it's uh, close to our down our town center area and I've been told that uh, the reason for that is because people want to be closer to the amenities that they can walk to which is really nice um, we've got Maumel Valley uh, Estates phase 19 which is under construction um, CCA phase 24B which is under construction and 24C which is under development um, we've got DeVoe Bend which just got approved and then Harris uh, addition which has been approved so between all of these we have over 200 available lots that are coming under within the city of Maumel but keep that in mind that even with that our average units per year is around 69 to 70 units per year so they don't all come in at once and that's going to be important as well as when you're uh, talking today about the potential annexation of uh, Pinnacle Heights uh, that would add to the potential of residential units that would come in that would also bring in uh, future cons consumers into the city of Momo. Um, so next slide. So uh, commercial building, uh, commercial development. Um, with that, uh, just kind of new development that's happening around the city, uh, the Splash Car Wash. Uh, it's about a $3.4 million investment coming into the city uh, in our town center area. Uh, that's also bringing in Splash Oil and Lube, which is about 700 million. I'm sorry, 700,000 on a new construction. Um, Center Point Energy Building is 3.5 million renovation. Uh, we've got a Molex renovation of about 1 million, and then a Maumel Senior Living Facility, which is about to get permitted. I don't have the exact numbers on that yet, but all of this is going to add to our total commercial. Um, for 2021, which is uh, shows behind, but we're about to exceed those numbers from last year. So uh, that's all that's in process. Um, opportunities from a commercial standpoint, of course, North Maumel, we finished the small area plan um, last year. Uh, the Club Manor and Town Center plan is underway, uh, which we're hoping will bring opportunities for uh, promoting commercial development. And then uh, the Diamond Park commercial, Around with the roundabout with the roundabout construction that uh, hopefully will get started fairly soon We just finished the shell station over there uh, that just got uh, CO'd um, And I anticipate with the construction of the roundabout that's going to bring in more interest of commercial development in that area Which we just saw an approval for a small strip center uh, just on the outlier of the ball fields uh, So we anticipate that um, to come in soon as far as our uh, plans review for the building um, and then out of all that, uh, the opportunities for the third interchange is we see commercial growth. Um, I, I imagine over time we'll see that trickle out to the third interchange. So, um, so with that, uh, some things that are going on internally that we're looking at uh, in combining the departments with planning and permits, we're able to bring in uh, a plan or two. With that plan or two came GIS capabilities. He's uh, uh, he's been working on growing our GIS uh, within the city, so we're using it internally. Uh, this basically just shows our trail systems. So we just came back from northwest Arkansas, so we have, uh, thanks to ETC, mapped out uh, the trail systems within the cities. We can also utilize this to find the connections uh, from a GIS standpoint um, and try to find the priorities for our trail systems in the city. Um, we also have... Um, next slide the uh, zoning land use parcels and municipal boundaries uh, he's brought in all that we can uh, we can make real-time changes as we change the zoning and land use uh, through amendments we can up, uh, update those maps um, fairly quickly as well as uh, the anticipation of having public facing uh, maps that can be utilized by both citizens as well as future developers um, and then uh, we have asset mapping uh, of our storm drain streets and parks we'll be able to uh, have real-time mapping of that so that we can keep up with where our improvements are as well as do an analysis for um, cost and other things fiscal cost so we're trying to grow our gis capabilities but of course that's limited by the budget that we have uh, within that area so it's just a matter of how much we want to use it into the future um, Okay, and then uh, what we've been spending uh, most of our time on recently is OpenGov. We just launched a new uh, platform. It's a, a cloud-based platform called OpenGov. Uh, this uh, system, we're transitioning from a previous legacy system. Uh, this one will, uh, has uh, uh, 
It's automated our workflows. It's made it much more efficient within our department um, to uh, work together seamlessly. Uh, it streamlined our application process, our citizens as well as um, our contractors can apply online directly. Um, it's allowed for digital plan submission and review uh, that uh, instead of uh, we've over the years we've gotten paper submissions and a lot of paper so we've reduced that and now we have digital we can review and we can get um, responses and comments back to the developers and builders instantaneously almost the same day if we can get um, so it works really well uh, task automation uh, we've been able to take certain tasks that were done by staff and automate that so it actually reduces the workload on our staff and allows them to be freed up so that they can do more um, effective work within the department and it allows us to progress uh, our uh, our purpose uh, of what we're trying to achieve within the planning and permits department and then lastly uh, we've started uh, uh, bringing on the business license uh, application renewal process and working with the city clerk's office um, we're looking forward to that uh, being a better service uh, to our businesses as well as growing um, and giving us feedback and more information that we can bring through reports on our business client so other than that we've got uh, land use review underway right now uh, that's brought up uh, questions on our side as to other modifications that need to be done uh, throughout our code when it comes to how uh, our section 94 which is our zoning ordinance uh, works in coordination with our uh, plan unit developments which we have a lot of in the city uh, so we're uh, we're eyeing that out but this month uh, we're uh, going to set up uh, some meetings for public input on the overall land use that we've evaluated internally and try to get feedback on that as we move forward through um, finishing up those um, and then we're looking at code updates uh, I think you have um, a uh, conditional uh, conditional use for r3 and a c2 in, uh, in front of you so I highly uh, recommend that you consider that uh, it that would actually give us the opportunity to see that particular zone to be used on, like a mixed use to where uh, site plan would have to be provided with a conditional use and uh, you can determine how much uh, and how you want to see that commercial and residential mixed together in those areas and then uh, lastly uh, looking for uh, trying to work on getting a grading permit um, within the city which is something that has been uh, a challenge um, but trying to keep with the integrity of the city of how we love our tree canopy and we want to make sure that we take care of that is that 20 minutes, 10 minutes. It was a little over 10, but uh, uh, very information packed, so I opted not to uh, uh, stop you. What, um, uh, was, there, was there any questions, comments, discussion? Thank you, Scott. That was a very thorough uh, overview of what y'all have going on. Just uh, a little bit of uh, uh, applause goes out to Mr. Grummer and what he's had to do coming into a department after um, this, the situation that he came in. Um, and then merging the departments uh, uh, has been quite an undertaking, and I think he's uh, uh, faced that challenge head on. Uh, for those that, uh, to, to really summarize uh, maybe how extra Scott can be, uh, is uh, while driving up to, we carpooled as much as possible for this benchmarking trip in Northwest Arkansas, and, and Scott was in my vehicle, and um, he goes, well, Mayor, I, uh, you don't have to use it, but I developed an app for our trip where you can take pictures of sidewalks, bike trails, walking trails, pin it onto a map, and then leave comments so we can come back later and just have this map with all the data um, all over the place. So you never have to see something and say, remember that one thing? You've got a picture of it. I don't know how many, and then he uh, shared that link with everyone. I'm not sure how many people used it, but I know that Scott probably took 5,000 pictures in a video. Just a little under 5,000. Just a little yeah, under. We're still trying uh, to extrapolate the data. It's uh, too big for the server. I told this in staff. There was a meeting this morning. There was a, there was a period where he's like, you know what we need is a video of everyone riding the bikes by. So he races up and, and chose a point where we were going on an incline and up a hill, and you see Scott racing by up the hill, sweating, dying, but challenge, you know, just conquering it gets up top wonder how he held the camera straight as he just records everyone going by so uh, just a, a fun it's little story just, just and then as talent. we're driving home 
like a dog with his face on the window, is snapping pictures out of the car of sidewalks and bike trails as though we hadn't just spent the last two days doing exactly that. Uh, so, I'm but looking, no, uh, I'm looking forward to bringing this back to the city. Everything yeah. we learned. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Scott. All right. Uh, next up is Planning Commission report. Council Member Williams. There were other, there were about four other council members in this meeting, so if I missed something, y'all jump on in there. But um, according to um, uh, their agenda, we'll start with new business and the Harris and Pfeiffer edition that we've talked about before. Um, there was a variance approved, um, which will keep loads of dirt from coming down the boulevard and will be just crossing across the road from. Uh, the Harris edition and the Pfeiffer edition as they they um, get their uh, property ready to to build uh, the center point training facility there was a lot of time spent on uh, fencing around uh, the old Molex building which uh, their plan was um, their proposed security fence was was approved uh, the old water treatment facility in the Maumel Country Club which is uh, something we've talked about about a million times uh, is being, um, they've requested it to be rezoned this time from PRD, uh, planned residential to planned commercial um, PCD. And um, they were granted a waiver and it doesn't grant the rezoning, it just allows the applicant to move forward with uh, a rezoning application. Um, the O'Reilly Senior Community Edition that was given a due pass uh, to, to us um, as they are in the process of uh, developing, um, they have, they've submitted a proposed preliminary development plan and um, to get things going at uh, 11905 Crystal Hill Road for their Senior Community Edition. And uh, that was uh, my short and sweet presentation of the, uh, very long <laughs> planning commission meeting. Thank you, Council Member Williams. Uh, with that, we all entertain a motion to have all ordinances and resolutions read by title only. So I've got a motion second. Um, is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say yes. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, Council Member Saunders not here. I paused, looked over at my Facebook, was looking for a ceiling fan, uh, uh, and waiting for that vote. With that, we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, next item is the second reading of Ordinance 1037, accepting annexation of land for the Pinnacle Heights property. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, and Ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1037, and Ordinance accepting the annexation of land commonly known as Pinnacle Heights property, to be titled the Pinnacle Heights property annexation to the City of Maumelle, Arkansas, and making the Pinnacle Heights property a part of the City of Maumelle and for other purposes. All right, thank you. I do have a public comment card from Jess Griffin. Uh, if you could come on down. And while you do that, Mr. Griffin, I just wanted to say thank you to you and to your client, Mr. Ramsey, for the public hearing that y'all uh, met with the members of the community for. Uh, that I've been to uh, several of that type of, of meetings, and I've never seen one uh, that went off so smoothly with transparency uh, on y'all's behalf, uh, as well as a group of residents seeking to uh, share their opinions and, and be informed about something. So if everyone went that smoothly, I think we ought to mandate them. That said, I don't think that that's uh, uh, how it goes. So with that, thank you, Mr. Griffin. Uh, please name, address, and you have three minutes, sir. Jess Griffin, 5 Kingston, Little Rock. And uh, appreciate y'all's time. I just want to see if we could do two readings maybe tonight. We delayed it last meeting and we're happy to do that to get uh, with the neighborhood and make sure they're happy. I think everything went really well with the neighborhood. I talked to a neighbor today and he seemed to be okay with doing two readings today and 
I think we've got a relationship put together that where if there was an issue, they know who they could call and how we could work it out and they feel like we could help them and we're happy to look at the design in different ways to maybe accommodate certain drainage or any kind of situation that might come up that would help any kind of neighbor out abutting the property. Um, and then uh, I just think, you know, everything's been going well and we did the delay and I was just going to try to see if we could do two readings. It, it would help us financially. I mean, it costs, we already have the land and trying to move forward with the development and every day is hundreds more dollars. That, so we want to just move it forward for that reason also. And that's, that's all I request. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Thank you. Council Member Mosley. Uh, yeah, I had a question for Mr. Griffin. Uh, sorry, sorry for you to get away. I was wondering if you'd had a chance, Bunny, uh, to uh, meet with the, the residents or at the end of uh, of the uh, street, uh, Ridgeland, there that where the where your proposed street would go through. Have you had a chance to meet with both of those residents by any chance as far as yes, we, how it might affect them? I think one of them is a newer resident, and then they were both at the very first meeting, and then I believe Jay is one of the or maybe it's not him, maybe it's someone has a camper. We talked to them and I know that they have the camper and that they live there and we we got a relationship with them. I don't know if the other neighbor showed up to the neighborhood meeting, but I know that we spoke with her the very first night because I was like, oh, you're, so you're right at that house. Okay. So we put everything together. I just don't remember their names. Yeah, the gentleman on the north side, uh, he was he had had some surgery problems and wasn't getting around very well, so I, he probably didn't come to the meetings. But uh, anyway, I just wanted no, to get... I think, actually, I think someone did come because yeah. we spoke about maybe helping them with their driveway and we yeah. offered to maybe make some kind of circle drive or something where it made more sense. Now the way the new drive would come in and make it where it'd be to their advantage, less, you know, a, and we just cut the road and it makes their property look a little funny. And yeah. so we talked about that and put in a circle drive right there for them. Is, is he agreeable to that or did that... Make him feel good? He's, he's agreeable. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're happy. To, you know, I want to I want to come through and make it seamless. And if it makes someone's property look bad, well, and we need to fix the driveway or make it where it, it would work out better with the way that we have to do the curb cut and add the road, then I think it's just going to make the whole, everything look better at the development, too. So. Okay. Thank you. I do have a question for Mr. Grummer whenever it's time. Any more questions for me? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Grummer? Again, looking at that piece of property down there at the very end that, that I think is called Tract A, is that correct? And uh, the it's, it's a pie-shaped piece of property, and the, the back side is probably pretty wide. I don't know how far that, how wide it is at the back, but the front kind of comes down. It looks like it's more like... Uh, 36 feet, something like that, and I think there's a 60-foot easement required right-of-way, is that correct? So, first of all, it's not a pie-shaped property. The way that the parcel is parceled out by the assessor is incorrectly shown from how it's platted. The actual parcel itself is more of a rectangle shape, and it already has the 60 feet, so they have the right-of-way width necessary to accommodate the road. Okay, I'll come by and take a look at that because everything I'd seen, it was kind of pie-shaped, but um, I'll come take yeah, the, a look at that. Yeah, the plat that we showed you uh, showed the 60-foot um, parcel. It just, the, the assessor doesn't always line their lines up correctly. I'm not too sure how that happened on the county data. All right. Okay, that's that's about all I've got. I'm, I'm looking at this thing more from a, you know, how's this going to affect the residents? Uh, I'm always, I'm, I'm happy to build out Maumel residentially the way it was originally planned with the, the boundaries. But when we go to adding, you know, breaking through a boundary and, and bringing in new new additions and new traffic and things like that, I, I, I feel like we need to go an extra step to make sure it's not affecting residents and, and uh, that sort of thing and the traffic on the boulevard uh, because... 
I still don't, you know, I'm real uncomfortable with how the boulevard traffic's gonna play out over the next few years. That's a, that's a question I've got, but thank you. Thank you, sir. Council member Gardner. Thank you, mayor. Um, yeah, I just wanted to echo the mayor's comments with how well this process has gone. And, and uh, Mr. Griffin, I know you and your client have gone above and beyond and there's been no waivers requested through this process. Um, and so I, I do appreciate that. Um, so. You know, I, I'll be willing to make a motion um, to suspend the rules on Ordinance 1037 and have both the second and third readings tonight. Second. I've got a motion and second to suspend the rules and have the second and third readings tonight. Just a refresher for those that um, uh, don't recall, this was on the, the agenda last council meeting and it was tabled, the second reading was tabled, so uh, um, this will be the third meeting, that the third city council meeting where this specific ordinance uh, uh, has been discussed in one form or the other. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Council Member Mosley? Uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be voting no. Uh, I never, or almost never, uh, waive, waive uh, the procedures and that sort of thing, so. I'm going to stick with that, and I'd also like to see that plat uh, Mr. Grummer's got before I end up voting on it. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of suspending the rules and have the second and third reading tonight, please say yes. 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 All opposed, no. 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 Motion carries with two against. Did we, is it a 60% on, on that? Is it 60, is it two thirds? Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to, here's the statute, if it'd be helpful for the city attorney. Thanks. Yeah, oh, my. Very nice. <laughs> Councilmember Shin. All we were doing is putting them back onto schedule and not delaying them any further. So I'm just voicing my objection to the fact that we're not taking care of this tonight. Thank you, sir. All right, if there's no additional discussion, this will be on third reading at the next city council meeting. All right, next up is the second reading of Ordinance 1038, am Amendment to Land Use Plan and Map. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumel, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1038, an ordinance amending the Maumel Land Use Plan and Map due to the annexation and for other purposes. All right, thank you. This is the <clears throat> land use plan amendment related to uh, that ordinance. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, it'll be on third reading at the next council meeting. Next item for business is the second reading of ordinance 1038 amending the zoning map. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Just read 1038. 1039. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumel, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1039, an ordinance amending the Maumel zoning map due to the annexation and for other purposes. This is the zoning map amendment that accompanies the land use map, <laughs> land use map amendment mentioned in 1038 and the uh, annexation mentioned in 1037. Is there any discussion on this ordinance? Council Member Mosley. I just wanted to echo the uh, mayor's thank you all very much for having that public meeting at the uh, community center. Uh, I've never seen uh, 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 
a group of residents become so satisfied about a controversial issue since I've been on the council and before. So thank, thank you very much for doing that. All right, absent any additional discussion, this will be on third reading at the next city council meeting. The next item of business is the third reading of ordinance 1040, accepting annexation of land Bradley property. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Yes, sir. Be it enacted by the city council of the city of Maumelle, County of Flasky, state of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled ordinance number 1040, an ordinance accepting the annexation of land commonly known as the Bradley property to be titled the Bradley property annexation to the city of Maumelle, Arkansas, and making the Bradley property a part of the city of Maumelle and for other purposes. Thank you. Uh, I do have a public comment card from a Carnell Smith. Come on down, Mr. Smith. If you could please state your name and address for the record, sir, and you have three minutes. Uh, my name is Cornell Smith. My address is 14102 Old Maumil Road. And I have an issue with the annexation of, of this property because where my house is located, I'm at the lowest point on that road there. And all the water that uh, drains from that side of the road, it comes within about, uh, say, it's about 60 to 70 feet of my house. When you annex this land and improve that uh, drainage system, well, it's going to bring all that water down beside me. As of right now, if it rain, say, about one or two inches, about two-thirds, I mean, about a third of my yard is underwater, both front and back. So if it rains maybe about three or, uh, three or four inches, probably two-thirds of my yard is both front and back is underwater. And with uh, addition with more water coming through more faster, uh, you see what kind of situation that I'm going to be in. And not only me have residents that's further behind me, I'm sure they have pretty much the same problem. But uh, as of right now, I think this board needs to take a real good look before they annex that right there and really need to go and talk to some of the residents in that area and find out just uh, how much damage this year is going to do. Because if you improve that and uh, that drainage system is surely going to create problems for people on my side of the street. And I don't see any way around it not happening. And as of right now, I just, I just hope you think real carefully and maybe not vote for this today, maybe another day, but I think you need to go and see, take a good look at the whole situation before it's ended because that side of the land, it kind of sits into a bowl and it's not going to drain that fast and I think I had a, a sister-in-law and I know another lady of friends which down below me near the tracks closer to the because uh, I'm up on Maumea Road they is down closer to like the uh, 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 come and go in that area where they had to go in and get a boat to get them out a couple of years ago because of the water built back up so it's, it's going to be it's not going to be that good for the people on my side of the road with this annexation the way I look at it right now. Unless you find some way to guarantee that the drainage system be improved and improved on my side of the road first, because I don't want you to uh, say, well, improve that side there, and then say, well, that's the county over there, and we'll get to it later, you know, because with today's uh, storms, you know, with this global warming, we just don't know what's going to come through. That uh, you know, but as of right now, I hope this board take a good, strong look at what you're about to vote on right now. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Council Member Holt. I have a for Mr. Smith. There you go. <laughs> I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Smith a couple of weeks ago, driving down the street for the first time and. Um, very quiet, very serene, very pretty uh, home. But I, as I went by, I saw this beautiful two-story uh, home with a wraparound porch, uh, a manicured lawn, uh, a very stately uh, area. And uh, there was a gentleman standing on the porch, and 
he was watching <laughs> my truck go by, and he thought, what is that guy doing here? So I came on down, and I said, I've got to talk to that man. So when I came back and parked out in the street and um, got out and went down the driveway, and he came out and met me, and I had a very, very wonderful visit with him. Uh, he, he does have a, a beautiful home, and he told me about the water and the stuff rushing and covering his yard uh, because of the drainage. Um, how long have you lived there now, Mr. Smith? I've lived there since 89. Since 1989. Since 1989. Yeah, so it's been about 32, 32, 33 years. His home is uh, right close to the church, um, and it's um, the, the entire neighborhood is a quiet, serene um, neighborhood, and uh, it's unanimous. We've had some ladies speak before, and of course they they try to keep it. They they want to keep it in the, in the uh, uh, setting that it's it is now. So uh, I ask him to be here tonight and he was very reluctant to come. Uh, but I thought it was important that he come and speak before us and, and uh, uh, let us know that um, uh, there is already a fixed neighborhood there and to disturb it would be, um, in, at least in their estimation, not right. Mm -hmm. So um, I appreciate him coming and I thank you and I've enjoyed meeting you. Yes, sir. Uh, if I may, can I add on to what I was saying? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, see, across that lane there, there's probably at least three culverts on the 365, that, and two of them feeding, the, uh, one feeding in front of the Bradley property, the other two feeding directly across, and all this water coming from the high ground, from like uh, the backside of where the Bradley Road is up there, but it also comes from off of Panther Mountain, and that's feeding in down there. And see, uh, I have had water come through there with a, such force that I done had uh, a, like a, a branchless trees that done died on the, over on the Bradley property washed through underneath that coverage. And these trees, is, uh, some has been at the base from 10 to 12 inches big around at the trunk, about 20 feet long. So I'm just trying to give you an idea the force of the water that I have to deal with coming through there. And like I say, I don't need any more increase in, the, in, what, in what I'm already having because it's surely going to cause me some problems. Thank you, sir. Council Member Mosley. Mr. Smith, uh, I was just going to ask you, are you located right next to that church? Is that where you are? Uh, yes, I'm a member of that church. Uh, my house is just uh, that place. Right next to it there as you drive, drive down the street, it's on the left. Uh, yeah, the, the COVID is between me and the church. Okay. Point, when you get to that COVID, then the house you look at, that would be me right there. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Um, so I just wanted to point out a couple things. So we don't currently have a development pending or being proposed in that area. What we have is a property owner who's wanting to annex into the city. Um, in my opinion, someone like Mr. Smith would want that area annexed because that allows the city to uh, have a role in how that drainage is occurred and, and how that is going on. I've mentioned this uh, before. Anyone uh, who's been paying attention to what Scott Grummer uh, has been doing and, and some of the current development knows that we are... Um, we are really putting the developers to task to ensure that that drainage is being handled as well as possible. Um, if this area doesn't annex, that means that it can develop at the same pace like some of the properties around it, except we lose the ability to influence it and have it built to city code, right? So anyone who, who, who wants to make sure that the city's Growing, growingly strict rules on drainage are able to be enforced in that area would want this area to be in the city of Momo. We've had a few um, different points in time where any, any one of us here can look and go out and talk to someone who says, boy, I wish the city would have annexed this. Boy, I wish this would have annexed in. I wish this business or this area was in the city but now it's not, it's outside of the city. And um, w when those projects or when those options to annex the land are on the table is not necessarily when there's a project there. The, the 
the time to make those decisions are before there's a project. If, if we want the city to have no say whatsoever other than our subdivision code in what goes in, then don't annex. Don't annex it, don't bring it in. We'll just roll the dice, and see what happens, see what comes up, and we'll either like it or not, and someone in five, 10, 15, two years will look at us and say, boy, I wish they would have done it, or boy, I'm glad they didn't do it. But I've, ne <laughs> I've, I, I've yet to encounter someone who said, boy, I'm really glad they didn't annex this part of town into town. This is a one, what's called a 100% uh, annexation. The property owner wants to uh, seize the value in being part of the city of Maumelle and wants to annex into the city. Thank you for that. We do have the uh, applicant here. I'm not sure if you wanted to say something or if you're just available, if there's any questions. Uh, thank you. Council Member Mazzoni. Yes, Mayor. Yeah, I have a question for uh, Mr. Grummer. Yes, sir. Mr. Grummer, come on down. Did you put in a public comment card, sir? I have one here. Could you bring it to Council Member Mosley, please? Yeah, I just want to confirm because I, I agree with a lot of what you said, um, but I do part of what our job as a city is to look after everyone. So not being fully versed, I know, especially from Mel Valley State, so I'm definitely attuned to drainage problems. Mm -hmm. So I just want to confirm, you're because you've completely overhauled the drainage when you look at new ones. Would that be something do you take into consideration areas like this that would be outside Maumelle but would be affected by any development if if and when something gets developed there? Are you're saying if it's basically out? would we take in the account the drainage issue if it goes to properties outside of Maumelle proper, we retreat that the same way as if drainage into just another, you know, area. Well, so part of our subdivision ordinance, uh, we require that no more water be drained out other than uh, what is required. So they have to detain that. Um, but being, uh, if the property is in the county, if the property is in the county, we don't review the civil plans on those drainage plans. No, if we, sorry, if we annex this, right, and there's a development, we take in. we take property that's adjacent to this in consideration because okay. it directly impacts uh, and that's where we look at our calculations okay and, and i believe I, I i spoke to mr smith if i'm not mistaken and we we did discuss um and you know the the location of where those houses are it's in an impact zone it's in the lowest area of that and the water flow from that entire watershed flows through that property around his property and and runs east uh, southeast towards the railroad tracks so, um, of course, the city, as the mayor said, we sc we're scrutinizing drainage plans more so. And I'm not the engineer, but I'm the planner that is making sure that the engineer is doing his due diligence. We've increased our, uh, our storm drainage requirements to a 25-year event where uh, I do not believe it's that much within the county. So uh, I would say that regardless of whether it's if this property is in the city and we're reviewing the civil plans, we're going to be looking at all adjacent property. But if it's not in the city, if it's in the county, we're going to do our typical subdivision review, and then it'll be put to the county to review those civil plans and how that drainage works out. Thanks. And the one of the reasons that that is is the the regulations on the land deal with the the water flowing off the property, and and how you have to control that, not what property it's landing on. Um, just so that there's understanding of sort of why that is the case. Council Member Mosley. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Grummer got away from me there. Uh, I I wanted wanted to ask, you know, we have extra territorial jurisdiction over areas that are within what a mile of our city limits. Is yes, that sir. right? Okay. If we did not annex this in, annex this in, uh, what would be the differences in general between uh, our extraterritorial jurisdiction and what we would have as, as if it was part of Maumel. Drainage, I guess, would be one thing. You'd say you would not be able to uh, exert any control over drainage. Is that correct? They would have to comply with our subdivision ordinance as it pertains to drainage. So they would have to design it according to the subdivision, but then 
that's the extent of what we do. From that point, uh, you go into the civil plan design, and uh, if we need to scrutinize it further or we need to extend uh, anything, uh, we don't have any control over that. The county does. Okay. So once that plat is approved, then uh, we're we're no longer involved. And I guess the um, there is a comment concerning uh, flooding around the come and go for commercial. We had uh, we had some comments previously on commercial development that got flooded around that area, but those areas were not reviewed by the city from a civil plan standpoint. So again, having control over uh, that the actual design is is a critical part. Mm, okay. Um, and I guess our, our extraterritorial, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have any say in uh, uh, building codes and that sort of thing. Is that correct? That's correct. We do not extend our, uh, our code enforcement into the All right. Or streets or anything like that, street width, correct. quality and that sort of thing. Well, they would, they would have to comply with our, again, subdivision as it pertains to street width with the type of street that it is. That's one of the, one thing I pointed out to several of the residents that I met and talked to in that area is that that we would be stricter on that sort of thing, and that perhaps you know they need to think about whether they'd be better off under Maumel, having them as a neighbor or or the county, and uh, I have never gotten anybody to say one way or the other. So, um, you know, I guess the the, the good thing about uh, if we annex that, it, it's not going to affect the uh, Maumel Boulevard traffic. Uh, it's going to go down 365, so we're not going to deal with that. Uh, the bad thing is we're probably going to have more trouble serving that area because it's outside the general Maumel property. We have to go out and drive a couple of miles down to pick up trash and uh, police calls, uh, fire department calls, and that sort of thing. So... Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm really on I'm I'm kind of on the on the edge on this, but I I'm, I'm leaning toward a no vote. But I'm just I can I can see it both ways. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to address Councilmember Holt brought up a, a good point and a good concern, which is when he talked about the 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 neighborhood, the character of the neighborhood being pristine and quiet. Um, that isn't necessarily going to remain the case, especially if it stays in the county. Uh, uh, currently, the zoning being requested for the, the property, the bulk of the property that's not immediately adjacent to 365 is R1. And that is the least impact. That ensures that the, the character of that neighborhood remains single family residential. Currently, if that area develops, it could develop into uh, drive through the county. Whatever you could imagine can go there. What we're seeing in this area, as well as other areas, is that development is occurring, whether that's in Maumel or not, is a different question entirely, right? So we've got subdivisions going in that are not in Maumel. The question isn't whether you want development to occur. In my opinion, the question is whether you want the city to be able to influence and impact how that development is and what the nature of that is. So, Mr. Smith, I understand your concerns completely, which is why, I, which is why I would want this property to come in if I were you. Um, but with that, I do have an extra public comment card from Mr. Uh, Rick Scott. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. If you could please state your name, address for the record. You have three minutes, sir. Yeah, so I can get identified on videos and everything. Turn around and wave to the camera or whatever it is. My name's Rick Scott. I live up on Panther Mountain. Not directly affected by this, but then you're starting to encroach upon the extraterritorial jurisdiction. And I would be in part of that. Part of that territorial jurisdiction, though, is a little bit more than what you're talking about. It, it affects, it gives the city of Maumel a chance to go in and say, we want you to do this or we don't want you to do that. And it's, if I remember the last time I looked it up, it's pretty broad. And it does give you an insight as to what you want to do with it and what you don't want to do. I talked to some of the people here, here on the city council. Nice talking to you. Uh, mostly well informed, except several of you were not knowledgeable about the extraterritorial jurisdiction. 
And it's like I heard one couple people say, well, I've never heard of that. I'm surprised with Scott Grilma here that you've never heard of it. I mean, it's a major thing that you guys have. If, if you're not using it, we should go to the legislature and take it away from you. And you probably wouldn't like that because it does have a bearing upon your control of what happens right outside your borders. Uh, I noticed we had a, an article from Rex Nelson in Sunday's paper, and he was going over all the good things that can happen to cities and why cities are uh, sometimes deteriorating. And it's easy to say, well, if you're not growing, you're dying. And of course, that's not true. There's no scientific evidence that says it. That's just saying you, if you're cancer, you have to keep growing. Well, no, you don't. Uh, my wife and I went up. I know you're keeping time all the way, so you draw a line. Went up to St. Louis one time. To, she was thinking about moving up there to, uh, to do a job. And we went around to some of the little towns surrounding St. Louis. And the general question I was asking was, why aren't you part of St. Louis? You know, and they're saying, oh, we don't want to be part of St. Louis. Okay, uh, what size do you want to be? Because you're constricted by your growth. And they said, we're well, about 15,000. That's about good. 15,000 people know us, we know them. It's a matter of just going in and, you know, we can talk to one another and we're not like the big cities. The St. Louis, you can't go in and find anybody that knows anything. Yeah, but they keep doing things. So I think the extraterritorial. The other thing is that when you, as you grow, his comment here in the Sunday paper, and I direct you to it, uh, he doesn't say anything about taxes. And, of course, as you guys know now, because you've been in the city council for a while, having taxes is your lifeblood. This is the main thing of why you grow or you don't grow. You have to keep maintaining whatever you're doing. You guys need to get paid. You know, they weren't paying you. You'd probably not be here. Right? Anyway. You have other things that have to go on. You've got police departments, you've got fire departments, you've got people who look after your sewers and a variety of other things. You have to do that. You have to have taxes. And that has to be some of the main things that you guys are looking at. And yet, here we're talking about doing more growth, bringing in more people. And as you're bringing in more people, you're not necessarily bringing in more taxes. You're losing taxes. You're costing more money. And that's a major consideration. Once upon a time, this is a new town, and you did you had certain things, and here's what you can do, and here's what you can't do. All of the, uh, what you call that big development over there on the east side of Maumelle Boulevard, you got a lot of people in there, no, no money coming in. No money coming in from it. You're going to have this coming in over here on 365, and it looks like you're going to have money, but there's no guarantee. You've got an R2 coming in there, you got a, what's the other one, C1 commercial? You have no idea what's going on. I have a feeling from just talking to various people that there's already plans of what can go in there. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Mm -hmm. I have a public comment card from Beverly Edwards. Come on down, you're the next contestant. If you could please take your, your name and address for the record. You have three minutes, ma'am. Beverly Edwards, 9411 Edwards Lane. And I'm Mr. Smith's neighbor. I'm right behind the church. And I hear us talking about drainage and what's best for the way we are boxed in there. Because we are boxed in. On our side, we're boxed in from the developer who's doing whatever he's doing back there. Because he's coming right behind our property line to run the sewer or the water line, whatever they're running back there, right on our property line in the back. And I'm hearing everybody talking about all this big development. But as Mr. Smith stated, we are a small, maybe 10 home community. And we don't want to end up like um, the Panky Edition. Either you got to do it or you don't. We should have a say in how we live in our little boxed in community because we are. Mom L is here, the developer is here, and now we're talking about having someone over here. And if I could have bought you videos, I would have, of my two granddaughters who are eight and five, riding the prince's car in their Jeep 
around the church, around the road and everything. And if we have all this extra coming in, I might be able to do that. Mr. Smith has a big firework. These are the small things that we're talking about. We're not talking about these big things. We're talking about small things. Mr. Smith has a big fireworks show in his yard every year. So do we. If we're annexed in as Mommel or Mommel comes in and says what we can and we cannot do, then we can't do any of that. We can't, we can't do any of that. And I'm, I'm trying to understand that on this side of the street, which the annexation is supposed to be going on, is Mommel going to be Mommel. And on the side where we're on, it's still going to be the county. So I'm trying to get a clear explanation of how that's going to be. Because what I'm hearing you saying is that you would want it, you would want it to come through because it would benefit us on this side. Well, the, rule, the county said that it's not. We're going to still be county. And just as he said that if the fire department has to come around, they got to come all the way around. Just like they cut us off from the railroad tracks because Old Maumee Road used to be the only road that they can get to Maumee. But now it's cut off by the railroad track and the buildup. So it would be two minutes for me to get from my house to my daughter's house. But I have to go all the way around to get there. So these are the small things that we're talking about. We're talking about the water systems. We're talking about all this trash pickups. But we're just talking about a simple, quiet living. Of course, it won't be quiet for long. We know that. We understand that. But we're talking about just let us have it for now. I mean, just let us have it because I don't understand how this would benefit Mel financially if this was annexed. How would it benefit you financially because you're already coming down 365 and in a year's time or whatever, it's going to be a five-lane highway down through there anyway, according to Mel Forward. It's going to be five-lane coming down through there anyway. So... I mean, it's, it's going to create more traffic for us to get home, and I intend to work until I can't walk. So I'm going to still have to go out and work, you know, do this and do that. But, you know, how's it going to benefit Mel financially and not cripple everybody else who's around in the adjacent area? Those are my questions. Thank you, ma'am. Did I use up all my time? Council Member Mosley? Yes, can I ask you a question? question? Uh, you would you would stay the way you are if we annex this in. We're not going to do anything to your area. Uh, would you rather see that property developed under the city of Maumel, uh guidelines, or would you rather it be under county where you don't know what might go in there? Well, we don't know what's going to go in there at Maumel either. I mean, we've seen the stories. I mean. You think you got a quiet neighbor over here and it's a big uh -huh. drug dealer. So we don't, we, you don't never, you never know. Okay. You never know. Okay. So, you know, I would rather, I would rather have my deer to keep coming over there to my yard eating my stuff. I would rather have them to keep coming over instead of having all the noise, all the traffic, all the everything. And just to have it serene like it is now. I'm 62, technically. Um, and, <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm just, I just want to. Bide my time and, and until God calls me home. Leave it. Just, just leave it. That, that's just my comment about it. Just leave it. I built my grandkids a playground over there. We got a trail. We got the, We have all of this. And if we have to abide by mommy or guidelines, I can't put me a deck on there unless I what, do what? Get a permit. I can't extend my deck unless I what? Get a permit. We don't have that permit now. We can just go build our deck as big as we want to build it. We can build whatever we want to build and do what we want to do without scrutiny from anybody. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, is there any additional discussion on Ordinance 1044? If there's, Council Member Gardner? Just one quick thing and then I'll make a motion. Um, it is 1.7 miles from the fire station and the police department to this property whereas it's two miles from my fire station that would service my house. So it's closer for this fire station to this property than it is my house to the fire station that services my area. So that said, I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 1040. Second. I've got a motion in a second. Council Member Shin. Uh, at the zoning meeting, there was a woman that spoke that one of her supporting facts was that she would much rather have Maumel police come 
instead of having to wait for 30 minutes to an hour for the county to show up. Now, I don't know if that's the case for the ones who are here tonight, but that was one of the points that she made that would actually support what we're looking at here. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. I've got a motion and a second to adopt the um, ordinance 1040. If there's no further discussion, Madam City Clerk, uh, roll call vote, please. Council Member Mosley. I want to say no. Council Member Mazzoni. Yes. Council Member Gardner. Yes. Council Member Williams. Yes. Council Member Tierney. Yes. Council Member Shin. Yes. Council Member Holt. Mr. Mayor, I will be voting no. I gave my word and I support the people who live there. I feel like they have a right to be represented in their voice, be heard. Um, they have done so very eloquently, and I, uh, as a matter of compassion, uh, compassion and uh, my feeling that we sometimes need to be in the people business rather than the financial business, I will be voting, I do vote, no. That was a long vote, but we'll take it. Uh, next. Item on the agenda is the third reading of Ordinance 1041, Amendment to the Land Use Plan and Map. Uh, Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1041, an ordinance amending the Maumelle City, the Maumelle Land Use Plan and Map due to the annexation and for other purposes. All right, this is the land use plan for this area that was just approved. Uh, if there's no discussion, I'd entertain a motion to adopt. So offered. I've got a motion. Did I hear a second? Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Council Member Mosley? Uh, yeah, I assume our, the annexation passed five to three. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all I've got. Thank you. Sorry. I have a motion, thank you. I have a motion in a second to adopt uh, Ordinance 1041. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Holt? Yes. Council Member Shin? Yes. Council Member Tierney? Yes. Council Member Williams? Yes. Council Member Gardner? Yes. Council Member Mazzoni? Yes. Council Member Saunders? I'm sorry, Mosley? Uh, yes. Ordinance 1041 is adopted. The next item on the agenda is the third reading of Ordinance 1042, Amendment to the Zoning Map. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1042, an ordinance amending the Maumelle Zoning Map due to annexation and for other purposes. Ordinance 1042 is open for discussion. If there's no discussion, I'd entertain a motion to adopt Ordinance 1042. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Madam City Clerk, roll call vote, please. Council Member Mosley? Yes. Council Member Mazzoni? Yes. Council Member Gartner? Yes. Council Member Williams? Yes. Council Member Tierney? Yes. Council Member Shin? Yes. Council Member Holt? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 1042 uh, is adopted. Thank you. That concludes old business. We will move on to new business. The first item of new business is the first reading of Ordinance 1044, Amendment to the Land Use Plan and Map. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1044, an ordinance amending the Maumelle Land Use Plan and Map and for other purposes. All right. Um, I don't know that 
have anything to add. We'll go ahead and open this up for discussion. We do have uh, applicants' representatives here. I'm not sure if you all wanted to uh, make a statement or just available in case there's any questions. Uh, are there any council member uh, comments? Council member, who got it? Gardner. <laughs> well, I just I know they had some things that they wanted to share with us about the property. So if, if they wanted to go ahead, that's that's completely fine. I'm Brian Dale with Joe White and Associates for the Civil Engineers on the project. We've got Scott Amon with SWD Architects. And we've also got Grant Cox with Qualbaum Grooms. Um, it's an age-restricted facility. Uh, it's a senior living facility that's on Crystal Hill Road. I'm going south of the first security bank and be a great addition to the city of Maumelle. We're here to answer any questions that you guys may have. Thank you. I thought I had a comment. Well, I, I do. Council Member Mosley. I guess I'd already hit it and I turned it off. Uh, yeah, can you elaborate on how many buildings and uh, that sort of thing, uh, access? Uh, will you be completely clearing the uh, lot and just some, some various things? Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the building is actually one building, but it's in three different sections. I'm Scott Allman with SWD Architects, 315 Nichols Road, Kansas City, Missouri. Um, it's basically one structure. It's all interconnected but it's three separate areas. We basically have an independent living that'll be four stories, a two-story assisted living, and a one-story memory care unit. The, assist, uh, the independent living has 93 units, uh, the, and those vary from studio units to one bedrooms and two bedroom units. And the assisted living will have the uh, 44 units. It's uh, divided into studios and one bedroom, and I want to say four two bedroom units that we have associated with it. Um, and then the memory care is all studio apartments, uh, and we have 18 units for it. Uh, we basically intend on leaving the, I have to, I have to get my bearings here, um, the, the back portion of the, of the lot, we're basically trying to remain all the timber and everything back there. So we're trying to develop the front portion of the, of the tract of land. Okay. Uh, how many, how many uh, were the independent living? How many? 90, 93 units. 93, okay. Uh, and you all do this, you've, you've got these uh, facilities in other, other states? And there's, yes, there's currently one being constructed right now in Little Rock. Um, it's just uh, getting started going vertical. And we've got completed facilities in the St. Louis area, two, uh, two facilities there. The Kansas City area, we have two facilities. Uh, O'Reilly Development has uh, uh, facilities also in the Springfield area. I believe they have three there. We, our firm wasn't involved with those, so I'm not sure of the numbers on those. And then we have one in Columbia, Missouri that's under construction. Okay. Well, it sounds like you all are serious about uh, going right ahead with this. You've got a preliminary development plan tonight. Absolutely. And, uh, and all that. I, I get a little nervous doing PRD if somebody doesn't have a plan right off the bat because I'm afraid something else may end up in there. But uh, it sounds like, sounds like this is a deal that's definitely going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I do, I, that is my ward, uh, and uh, a lady spoke uh, at the Planning Commission meeting uh, supporting that. She's, she tends to uh, uh, be the person that, that uh, represents that mentality in that area, and she was very much in favor of it. I know she asked you to leave some deer and some trees unscathed, and it sounds like there may be a few, but... Yeah. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. I, I will be looking at this more favorably than I would normally. We're, we're basically taking commercial to, to residential, and I, I usually object to that, but uh, uh, this, this facility seems to be, it's not gonna interfere in traffic in the morning. That's where things gonna be more like a commercial development. Uh, is there a sales tax associated with this? Uh, uh, Monthly, believe, monthly sales believe, tax. I don't believe the developer's been asking for any sales okay. tax. Okay. So. All right. That's all I've got for now. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional uh, discussion on this ordinance? Seeing none, it'll be on second reading at the next city council meeting. With that, we can move on to the first reading of Ordinance 1045, Amendment to the Zoning Map. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. 
be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 1045, and ordinance amending the Maumelle zoning map and for other purposes. This is the zoning map that accompanies the land use plan amendment that y'all just saw. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, this will be on um, second reading at the next city council meeting. We will move on to resolution 2021-24, approving a preliminary development plan. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas. A resolution to be entitled Resolution Number 2021-24, approving the preliminary development plan for O'Reilly Senior Community Edition. If uh, I may, so this is the preliminary development plan. Uh, we typically don't, um, we typically would have looked at the zoning already. Uh, I think we can approve this conditionally, condition upon the subsequent votes, or my preference would be to table this until the second meeting in October, which will be when the land use plan and zoning map will be on third reading. So at that meeting, we would have the land use plan, the zoning map, and then the preliminary development plan to be voted on. So moved. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Um, is, and, and I haven't talked with the applicants. Is there any reason that that ruins anything for y'all? No, sir. As long as we can have them all together in the third reading at the same time, that'd be, it would keep us on schedule. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I've got a motion second to table this until the second meeting in October. Any discussion on that motion? Uh, Council Member Gardner? No, I just wanted to quickly thank y'all for submitting such a clean application to the Planning Commission. Uh, I know they spent a lot of time looking at this, and uh, um, I've never seen something go through the Planning Commission so quickly all in one night. And I say quickly, I know that there was months and months and months of work that y'all put into that beforehand, uh, but and also thanks to our Planning Department because they gave y'all a, a good checklist to follow. So uh, it was a pretty interesting meeting to see them raving about how clean of a submission it was. So thank y'all for that. Outstanding. We've got a motion and second to table resolution 2021-24 till the second meeting in October. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries us to be on third reading at the second, second meeting in October. Third. This will be on the agenda. <laughs> for a reading, because it doesn't actually need to be read anymore, uh, but this will be <laughs> up for a vote on the second meeting in October. Whew. With that, we will move on to the first reading of Ordinance 1043, adopting provision for sick leave accrual. Council Member Gardner? Uh, sorry, I just want to clarify one thing. You said this will be up the second meeting of October. The third reading of these ordinances would be on the first meeting of October. So what was the motion that was made? Can we, uh, uh, I'd, I'd make a, a motion, <laughs> I'd entertain a motion to uh, move resolution 2021-24 to the first meeting in October. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor? Yes. yes. <laughs> all opposed? <laughs> motion carries. <laughs> a good catch, Councilmember Gardner. With that, thank you. The well, if we could get the first reading of Ordinance 1043, adopting provisions for sick leave accrual, read by title only, Madam City Clerk. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maumel, Pulaski County, Arkansas, Ordinance Number 1043, and Ordinance of the City of Maumel, Arkansas, adopting provisions for police officer sick leave accruals and for other purposes. Y'all will recall a little while ago, um, as the city was updating its personnel manual, we found a provision in the code that said that, or in the statutes that ba basically said that we had been giving uh, more sick leave to uh, law enforcement officers than was authorized by law. Um, as uh, a result of that, we amended uh, our policy on that and 
Pinky promise to advocate during the legislative session to get the law changed to allow us to um, um, provide the amount of sick leave that we felt was appropriate. Uh, State Representative Mark Lowry sponsored a statute, uh, uh, a bill that eventually became a statute uh, that allows us to amend the sick leave back to um, an area, uh, roughly back to where it was. We've uh, it's allowed us to define what a working day is. We worked with um, the city attorney uh, and myself. Uh, worked with Chief Pickard to come up with the definition of working day that, or, or set how many hours that was in accordance with what they thought was best. We've made those changes here and um, that's where we're at. If, so I'll open this up for discussion if there is any. Make a motion to accept. That'll be great. Sorry. We'll wait. Sorry. Sorry. Would you like to <laughs> withdraw that motion? Most we're doing a resolution by mistake. Would you like to withdraw that motion? Yes, sir. Great. I can't believe someone would ever possibly make a procedural error at a city council meeting. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> um, all right. If there's no discussion, this will be on second reading at the next city council meeting. All right. We will move on to resolution 2021-25, adopting premium pay. Uh, Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that resolution by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas. A resolution to be entitled Resolution Number 2021-25. A resolution adopting premium pay for certain municipal employees from the American Rescue Plan Act and for other purposes. All right. Thank you. Um, Clerk Timmons, let me give you a little bit of an overview of what this is and the timing of it. Uh, first of all, uh, the city received, as you all know, uh, uh, just above $3.7 million in ARPA funds. Um, e we've received half of that. The, net, the, the second half is due next year. One of the permissible purposes of the American Rescue Plan Act monies that were given to municipalities was to be able to compensate those essential employees um, that have uh, continued to work uh, throughout the COVID pandemic. Um, as many of y'all know, even at, at times where we were meeting virtually, we still had uh, employees out in the field um, um, dealing with and doing the same job that they've, they've always done. Uh, we didn't have the ability, like some businesses, to go remote uh, with so many of our different employees. As a result, uh, we're wanting to do three things. One is give a premium pay to all employees uh, that are essential, which is uh, all of our employees, an amount up to $1,500, um, for those full-time employees and $750 um, for part-time employees. This is an amount equal to what Little Rock uh, recently gave. Union County gave $2,600 um, and Benton County gave $1,500. I asked um, uh, my chief of staff right before the meeting, just glance at a few other jurisdictions and see what um, is going on. Other cities have done a total amount and, um, and then they'll divvy it out individually. So that is the first component of this. We have two other components. So just a premium pay across the board um, is, I think, if um, essential. It's essential for our essential employees to, to recognize that the city values the work that they've done throughout COVID. Second of all, we have difficulty with certain positions retaining people in those positions. I've given an example of a, a sanitation, one of our um, trash truck drivers who left the, the city of Mall Mills employment to take a job at a competing sanitation entity here in central Arkansas and received an $8 an hour raise. Um, we have police officers who are leaving and taking in comparable cities. In Sherwood, we had a police officer leave and take a, a job for 
about seven thousand dollars more, seven or eight thousand dollars more, um, and that's just a, that's for a comparable city here in Pulaski County. So we want to provide some premium pay to hard to fill positions and hard to retain positions. These are positions that um, we're having difficulty keeping people employed in those positions, and then also uh, having a difficulty recruiting. Right now, uh, I think we're down five police officers in um, uh, the police department. Public Works, Sanitation and Street, Mike Hogan's crew is down 14 employees. Um, that's, we're, we're, we're running into some real personnel problems, and I've said this before, we'll have to, we'll have to find a way in the budget session to <laughs> find money to be able to, to pay our employees an amount that keeps them showing up to work and, and doing a good job. So the second component is retention. There's certain hard to fill positions that would get an amount up to $1,000. Um, and then the third is basically a sign on bonus incentive for certain positions in an amount up to $2,500. And this is why we're running this now instead of waiting. We have uh, police and fire testing coming up in October. Applications have to be submitted here at the end of September. Uh, last time, I believe, three we tested last month, Chief, and, and, and help me out if I say anything wrong, we had three people sign up to test, and I believe there was one that, was, that passed the initial stages, uh, and I'm not sure that we've hired anyone from that list, and I don't think we will. If we do not, and that's with four or five vacancies, where civil services usually used to test once a year, we need to be able to uh, uh, announce a, a sign-on bonus um, to be able to get people to, to show up and, and interview for this job. We don't want uh, we don't want to go through a process where we're we're unable to hire police officers. I guarantee you, and it is a competitive market right now. We know law enforcement is not the most popular profession, um, and we know that our surrounding jurisdictions are paying more, um, and we're now starting to lose officers to neighboring jurisdictions. We need to be able to retain them and recruit for those positions, and that is the ne that's occurring in the next couple weeks. So three components, three big components of this um, resolution, the timing and needing to advertise and promote for the testing that is gonna be occurring early next month is the reason for the timing of this. We're still planning on coming together to the council with different presentations, having either a workshop or meetings talking about these ARPA funds, but we're waiting for the final rule to be issued. We're, right now we're working with the interim final <laughs> rule. Um, and so we, we, we just can't wait for the final rule to come out if we're gonna advertise and market uh, for the um, sign-on bonus for officers. So I, I hope I've given a, a good explanation of this. I am ready for all your questions, comments, and concerns. Uh, Council Member Mazzoni. Motion to approve. Second. I've got a motion second. Is there any discussion on that? All right. Um, I've got a motion second to approve resolution 2021-25. All in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Thank you very much. Resolution 2021-25 passes unanimously by those present. And yet again reiterates that I'll never be able to predict what we're going to talk about for a long period of time and what we're not. With that, we will move on to Resolution 2021-26, amending the 2021 General Fund Budget. Madam City Clerk, if you could please read that by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas. A resolution to be entitled Resolution Number 2021-26. A resolution to amend the 2021 General Fund Budget. Um, we're talking about Fire Department, and so Chief Ezell came running in here. This is a, a net um, to the budget change of zero dollars. Um, the uh, Chief Ezell and Liz uh, work pretty hard to find a way to be able to um, not come to the council and ask for more money, uh, but to be able to shuffle money to be able to pay overtime costs, which, as you can imagine, have been fairly high. Chief, would you like to talk about why overtime is so high? It's 
So, of course, everybody knows we're still dealing with COVID a little bit. Um, so I've had some folks out with that. Um, not with COVID, but uh, with symptoms and what have you. So they've had to quarantine. We also had the, the big snowstorm back in February where we put extra personnel on. Um, and we actually had two house fires during that time. So we needed every bit of that help. Um, we've had an individual that had a premature infant by like two and a half months and it spent two and a half months at Children's Hospital. I mean, just unforeseen things that have come up throughout the year and uh, you know, we're, we're just trying to make sure we're being as fiscally responsible as we can. And we've, I think I saw in there something about uh, we had grant money to kind of cover the $10,000 that we took out of the uh, clothing and accessories and that that's actually not the case. Um, we're, we're just gonna pinch and save what we can there. Um, the grant that we got, we did actually get a grant and I think this is something I talked to everybody about during budget last year, the Cascade system. <clears throat> we, we got that grant. Uh, it's about $228,000, so we're going to be able to replace the cascade in all of our SCBAs, uh, which is something I talked to everybody about last year during budget season. So, um, And those are the breathing apparatus? Right, yeah. So the tanks, the, the packs, the tanks that we actually wear into the fire, um, we get to replace all of those um, this year. We get to replace, you know, I told you about we had, oh, what is that, probably a 20-year-old uh, mobile unit. Um, that finding parts for is all nearly impossible. So um, we applied for that grant and Senator Bozeman called about, what was it, three weeks ago, I guess, and let us know that we actually got it. So, um, but as far as grant funds for what we're doing here, this, this is just something we're taking out of our budget. Um, the education money, the, the $20,000 there is, is meant for paramedic students. Uh, we had a school that was scheduled for August and then they canceled at the last minute. I don't know, you know, I'm sure COVID had a part to play in that as well, but they're not planning on starting that till the first of the year. So um, all we're doing is asking to move that money around to try to help cover the personnel costs that we're seeing right now. Thank you, Chief. Councilmember Gardner. Motion to adopt resolution 2021-26. Second. We've got a motion and a second to adopt 2021-26. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Can I, can I add one more thing? You may. Um, for those of you that are available, I don't know if you've seen it on Facebook or not, at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning, we're doing the uh, traditional wet down ceremony for the new engine. Uh, we're actually placing it in service that day. So if you're available, you're more than welcome. We'll be at station two at 4101 Club Manor. What, what day was that in? Uh, this Thursday. Thursday, okay. Yep. Thank you. And you'll be spraying everyone with your uh, fire? Absolutely. Hoses? <laughs> That's what the wet down is? <laughs> Smack down. <laughs> All right. Um, we will move on to the final item of new business, um, and that is a discussion of the <coughs> Northwest Arkansas benchmarking trip. Um, we um, extended an invitation to council members to attend a benchmarking trip in Northwest Arkansas to uh, uh, examine and really look at how their uh, bicycle and pedestrian trail system uh, was in place, some of the things they had going on, how that system can impact other community services, economic development in the area. Uh, that invitation went out to all council members. Um, we had several that were able to attend, several that said they'd love to if their schedule would have worked but didn't. We took then a total of 12 folks, including um, uh, some of the senior uh, uh, staff that had positions that really would play a crucial role in any uh, comprehensive bike, ped, uh, trail network system that we have. What I have now is, uh, I have this just set on uh, roll call, which means anybody that can talk uh, without pushing your button. It also means I can't see if you've pushed your button. Uh, but what I wanted to do is for those that went or those who didn't get a chance to go, if you wanted to just um, uh, talk about that experience, what you've learned, things you can bring back, or if you didn't get a chance to go, if you have any questions, uh, 
Let's do it. Good idea. I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> um, one of the things that I found interesting is you know, a lot of times we think of Maumel as we have got a ton of walking paths. We think of ourselves as being this really walkable community. Um, but in a lot of ways, that, that system is just dated, not just in the, the upkeep and maintenance of those trails, but also in the way we think about how these trails work, how they connect to one another, how they connect to uh, uh, and create and can build a, commu a, a whole community. So it was interesting to see that. It was also interesting for me to, to look at a lot of their trail system or, or engineered built trails. A lot of ours uh, are compacted dirt with asphalt poured on top of it. I do not think we will ever be able to maintain our way to better trail system through milling and overlaying the trails. I think that for, um, and it's easy to say now, I think what we need to do is take all the trails out, engineer them, build them. That's going to come with a, a hefty price tag and not necessarily what I'm advocating for, but just the understanding that, that when we're talking about how to bring a community together, how to get to Lake Willistine, how to, to, to be able to take your family uh, and, and go watch fireworks uh, or other events, how that network of trails can work to make that happen. Did anybody else learn anything? <laughs> well, thank you for... Um planning this trip and, and, and offering the invitation to us and then uh, you know for, for those that went to go with the city staff that would be responsible for implementing different pieces of this was really refreshing because you were getting different voices and different eyes on it. Um, Director Grummer's eyes were all over the place. Uh, he was like a kid in a candy store. I mean this was his world. So we're just living in it. Uh, but that it was great to get his take on it and then also having Parks and Rec involved uh, because they might be maintaining some of these trails that would tie into our parks. And then, uh, of course, you have Director Hogan. Can I, uh, yeah. Councilman, I don't want to stop you, but I'm going to stop you. If you can, the, the roll call isn't working and you're cutting out. I want anyone watching on Facebook people to hear. So you can just hit sure. the button now if you want to talk, free for all. Uh, and then with uh, Director Hogan in, in public work, seeing how, you know, he was asking questions about maintenance and ongoing and things like that. Uh, this was my first trip to actually be on the Greenway and spend significant time on it. And like the mayor just alluded to, we think we have a trail-friendly city, and then when you ride on actual trails and then actual streets that have been designed with foot and, and cycle traffic in mind, they're completely different. Um, and what we do is, as they would say, we're just checking the box and saying, oh yeah, we, we painted a line on the streets and now we have bike paths. Well, that's not a bike path. That's just a, a false sense of security, if you will. Um, but it was a, it was a great trip to see a lot of uh, successes and then a lot of failures. Uh, they pointed out failures as well. Um, one of the failures was a, a, a state highway where they have a three foot bike lane and it's an extremely busy street and uh, the mayor put his frame in that three feet and there's a lot of cars coming at him. So, uh, but to me, what was really overall the development that has taken place along the Greenway and then the associated loops that come off of that. It was fascinating. Mixed use, residential, uh, commercial, um, restaurants. I mean, it was really fascinating to see what has sprung up along these trails. Uh, and Bentonville, I think, was one of the better examples, well, to me, of incorporating the mixed use. Uh, they had some mixed use, er mixed use areas along these trails that were fantastic with commercial on a bottom floor and then residential on the two floors above it. It was not what I expected. Com completely quiet, very little traffic from very clean. very clean, very little traffic from vehicles. Um, it's somewhere that I would want to live if I didn't have three kids running around, <laughs> possibly. Or if I didn't have three kids, maybe there's people that want that lifestyle. But um, beautiful, beautiful properties have, have, uh, have grown off of all that they have done up there. And so I know the mayor is going to come forward down the road with some ideas uh, with the club manor study that's going on. And um, I, I agree that we need to get ahead of what Metro Plan is thinking about with uh, all the money that they're pouring into trails over the, is it five years or ten? Ten. 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 So it, it's, it's prudent for us to get ahead of this 
figure out what we want this to look like for Mom L. That way, when it, it comes our turn, we've already got our plan figured out and we're ready to go. So I, I thought it was a great trip. That was the most learning I've probably done in two days since being in college. <laughs> it was it was an excellent trip. So thank you for bringing that to us. And I hope when those opportunities come along down the road that uh, we have more opportunities to go and, and learn together. I thought that was one of the biggest takeaways for me was the learning that we could do. I'm not controlling it. Just oh, well, hit the so mic and I, talk. Somebody had mentioned that this could have been a Zoom meeting. There was absolutely no way this could have been a Zoom meeting. We had to see it for ourselves and, and, and bike the paths and walk the paths and, and, and see the walkability and the things that they have designed in their cities that were just phenomenal, unbelievably cool. And uh, we talked about, uh, you know, dynamics changing and demographics changing and, you know, younger people are wanting to have a walkable community where they can just park their car you know, drive, uh, bike their kids to school, go to the grocery store on their bike, walk here or there, go to their favorite coffee shop, go to their favorite bar, and uh, just live a lifestyle of, of health and, um, and social, socialization and not just being so isolated in your car all the time. And he said, uh, he showed us the, there were people who had moved to Bentonville and parked their car and their cars had not moved since they, since they moved there. And the property values were just uh, booming in these cities. And we went to Fayetteville, Bentonville, uh, Springdale, and Rogers. And uh, wherever the trail was going, the property values were just just blowing up. And it was so fun to see. It was, um, it was fun to exercise hard for two solid days in the 102 heat, but uh, we made it. <laughs> I think they went easy on us uh, on the end there as uh, uh, we were we were falling out left and right. Um, uh, uh, accolades go out to uh, Councilmember Williams who chose not to get the the e-bike, which is a, a it, it assists your pedaling. You still have to pedal, and it, it it's a lot easier, uh, but it's not you're not riding a, a, a motorcycle. And for some reason, <laughs> Councilmember Williams said that she was just going to be a hard charger and chose not to. Uh, I get thought it. I was going to be the only one with an e-bike if I chose an e-bike. <laughs> and then I get there, I'm the only one with an actual bike, except for maybe Scott. Well, Scott and, has, and Scott's an actual cyclist, so he didn't count. And the best part was, uh, uh, um, I'm pretty sure there may have been some taunting coming from Scott toward you for not selecting an e-bike, which was great the next day when he ended up not having one. Yeah, it, it was ta there was taunting from everybody. Yes. I would never have taunted. <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to mention I actually made it up to Northwest Arkansas over the weekend. We decided to go up and visit our son, and while we were there, we went and toured uh, downtown Bentonville and toured downtown uh, uh, Rogers and saw a lot of the things you guys probably saw, and I was really impressed with Bentonville. I'd never been there. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Uh, it was pretty amazing, uh, all, all the confluence of splash pads and, and these trails saying one-tenth of a mile to the uh, crystal bridges going off into the woods and stuff. It was really cool. Um, I was also very impressed with uh, Bentonville's downtown square. I thought that was really neat. In fact, it reminded me exactly of uh, um, what's that? What's that town out in uh, San Antonio, New Mexico? <laughs> oh no. Uh, what is, What is that tourist town out there? Santa Fe, yeah, it reminds me of their square. The only thing Bentonville <laughs> was missing was a bandstand, but it, it had. Oh, I it, thought they had one. Did they not have one? I, I, I don't thought think they had a gazebo or something. Oh, okay, okay. I don't think they had one, but anyway, it was just, it almost looked like the Back to Future Square, too, and I thought, boy, that is really cool. I would There's, love, that's I would that's the that. thing I've always pictured yes. for that, that area down there uh, between Kroger and the old neighborhood market, but... You know, if, if there's any way we get to that point, that would be really great. So but uh, there was also a, a lake out east of downtown um, Rogers called Atalanta. Did you guys go there? We yeah. biked around it. Did you? Okay, because we walked, we walked around that, and then we discovered there was all these biking trails for all different uh, uh, 
uh, skill levels and stuff. So it, it was really, really neat. So I, I, I'm a trail fan. I'm, anything we can do to get more trails and keep the ones maintained we've got. And I've got to, I've got to put out a kudos to Birch Johnson because our trails were falling apart back in the uh, very, very early 2000s. And, and uh, I was one of the ones that raised the issue about it. And, and he formed a task force and I was on that task force. And we, we tried to come up with other ways to put more trails and then also maintain the ones we got. We, we categorized them and, and got the uh, got some of the trails repaved at the time, so 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 at least they didn't keep degenerating. But anyway, I'm I'm for all that. One one good uh, example. In fact, I was going around Lake uh, uh, Atlanta, and one of the inclines was where Scott decided to try and make it in front of everyone to record. But uh, <laughs> I, I I remember thinking to myself like how you were able to experience that lake in a, in a way that was different than you were able to experience Lake Willistine. Um, or I, I was looking out at our um, uh, deck, our, our dock there at Lake Valencia, um, and comparing it to the, the, the infrastructure that they had at, at Lake Atlanta. Um, that really kind of, you could tell it, there's a big difference between the two. Now, if we can just get people to throw money at us like that, uh, yeah. that'd be something. But I think there's still, you have to start somewhere. Council Member Shin. Just a couple of the things that I brought back that was really a surprise to me was that they have determined that the community that has this is 11% healthier. And when you look at the number of people in northwest Arkansas and you look at that kind of improvement, it sure makes me want to look at our community and see what we can do that would help our community the same way. Also, the way they have brought this into the school systems there, they have riding teams, both on-road, off-road. They also have uh, PE courses where they actually teach <coughs> bicycle etiquette and things like that and programs where the kids can actually get bicycles for free. And so that's encouraging the next generation to be healthier, to use these trails that we'd be putting in, investing in. So it's investing in the future, not just in some unique something that we think is kind of, I can't think of the word I want right now. Um, it's not this week's thing. It's going to be around a while. So it won't just be a fad. Councilmember Williams alluded to this. Um, one of my takeaways as well was uh, younger individuals and younger families are not buying single residence homes in neighborhoods as much as they used to. And, you know, I don't want to pigeonhole an age group, but I don't know if that's 35 and below, 40 and below. I don't know what it is. I'm 44. I like my single family house. But that's something that our city is going to have to consider down the road with planning and what we choose to allow to be built in our city. If younger families or younger individuals, period, are not wanting to buy a single family residence, then we're kind of giving ourselves a market of, okay, we're not going to, we don't want young people to live here if we're not going to allow properties that they want to buy here. Um, and that's it's just south of the downtown square in Bentonville. It's probably like two or three blocks is where we were and seeing all this economic development right off of the square, and it was it was fascinating to see. But that was kind of a, a wake up call for me to know that we were, we're going to have to adapt and and allow some of these projects that would that would want that young people would want to move into, and they want that walkability, like you mentioned. They want to be able to to go and be close to everything. So that's something to consider for us down the road. Well, they were talking about too how uh, they the big box stores are just going the way of the dinosaur. These smaller stores, uh, they called it granular. Right. Yeah, where you can you can walk down the street, you, you, you get to know the owner of the store, you buy off the sidewalk, and um, they're, um, they're wanting to basically revitalize Main Street, downtown Main Streets, and, uh, and we don't have that, but we, I think what they are, what these people were most impressed about Maumel is that we are young and that we can start, we, we don't have to completely redo and that we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we can begin now 
in uh, offering these things to uh, the next generation. I thought that was incredibly cool. And Mayor, if I, if I may, uh, I originally wasn't invited uh, <laughs> to this trip, so I was able to attend because some others weren't. Most of you know that my uh, career prior to becoming city clerk was in economic development. One of the major, almost always, a prospect was interested in was quality of life. And what I learned from this trip uh, is that that is an essential uh, part of quality of life. The way that they're doing their biking trails, it was inclusive. It was inclusive for elderly. It was inclusive for single uh, people. It was inclusive for families. So there was a, there were, that it was a part, it was an amenity that wasn't um, just, it wasn't segregated just to one particular demographic. And that's one of the things that uh, I like. And I am actually somebody who is very out of shape and had a really hard time, but uh, those e-bikes were awesome. The, to the experience itself, uh, it wasn't a cakewalk. You know, it, it, it was truly, um, you had to be there to really understand it. It wasn't a vacation, but it was an awesome experience, eye-opening, and I think we do have the opportunity to move Maumelle forward in a direction uh, to where basically the world is going and not just have tunnel vision, but right. think of these things and think of um, working with what we have and adding on to it and maybe getting a Walton connection. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it was a great experience. Thank you for letting me uh, tag along with you guys. Really quickly to tag on to what Councilmember Gardner was talking about, young families, and I think that's um, important. I think that everyone here wants, I, I know that my oldest is only six, but I'd like to, to live in a, a, a city where he would want to live in, in this missing demographic that we, that we uh, have, which is your, your younger folks don't, we're not, we're not checking that box the same way we are for a lot. Of, this is a great place to uh, uh, raise a family, retire, and most everything in between. We're just missing that one segment. But um, um, more than it, it, that isn't just geared toward this. Nicole Vogler with uh, uh, Senior Services was really it was really nice to have her there and and being the advocate for seniors. And, and really providing insight on, because she's a cyclist and, and rides with people from the Center on the Lake uh, and others, uh, being able to advocate for uh, and, and see how this impacts not just young families, but also um, um, seniors and everyone in between. So it wasn't just about that age demographic um, by no stretch of the imagination. With that, if no, if no one has anything additional to uh, add, we can move on. Thank you, guys. With that, we will move on to Mayor's comments. Um, just an update. We had to close the um, cafe at Senior at Center on the Lake uh, uh, for the bulk of last week. We had someone in the, the cafe who tested positive, asymptomatic, um, and so at an abundance of caution, we closed that down and sent anyone um, um, that had had um, sufficient contact with that employee home uh, for the duration to make sure that uh, we weren't spreading uh, COVID through Center on the Lake. Um, I wanted to point out also, there's an FYI, uh, check out the density friend or foe. It asked some questions, it's a clip out from the City and Town Magazine and then an updated, what appears to be accurate uh, uh, speed uh, study on uh, Riverland. Thank you, Council Member Mosley, for pointing out the error in the last one that we had. Sure. With that, uh, we will move on to Council Member comments. Council Member Mosley got it. Yeah, to kind of tie it into what we were just talking about, I, I did have it on my, my list here to ask a question. Uh, we would got to have traffic flowing out of Maw Mill in the morning so that young people can go to work so that they'll want to live here. But... Uh, I, it was a couple of years ago, I think Scott Grummer and myself, and I think Mr. Tierney and Jess and I, and I'm not sure if the mayor was there, but 
uh, our dot came and made a, a presentation basically lobbying for that half a cent or full cent that they wanted to see extended at that last election, which did pass. And at that time, I got up to the podium and, and I said, what about uh, the proposal for widening Maumel Boulevard and, and giving more access onto the 430? And, and Scott Bennett at the time said, if you pass, if this tax gets passed, this will be a deal that we'll do. And uh, I think Mr. Grummer had a camera going and hopefully we got it on tape and all that. But I was wondering if, if we've heard anything. Is, is that on, on a list? Do we, do we talk regularly with our daughter or anything? Yes, uh, through uh, an at Metro plan meetings, this is not on, and I've asked about this, this is not on any short lists. It's not on any short lists of projects. It's on a long list. A long list, okay. Like a, a, well, it, it's not on the short list. It's it's not something that is going through any planning stages uh, at this juncture. It's on the it's on the to do list down some ways. Okay. Well, it, what we came away with was that if this passed, it would get done. We didn't anticipate it would be in within two or four years, but. Hopefully, about the time uh, the third entrance starts showing some congestion or something. So, uh, if you couldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind, try to try to get a clarification. Make sure that is on the list. Well, somewhere. It, it, yeah, it's on it's on the long list, it, which is the the I don't know. Think of a project, and that's probably on that long list with it. Okay. We talking ten years or? I'm talking. Have... It's on. It's 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 on a to do list down in the. The, the unnumbered area. Okay. Right. So it's not on, uh, at least last I inquired, and it's been a few months, it's not on any lists of this is a project that is queued up. It's in the bucket of projects that have yet to be really even thought about being numbered. And I don't know that that's an accurate way to describe it, but it's not, it's not on any list where there, there's no timeline. It's on, yeah. Yeah, well, let's lobby for it whenever we can. Make sure it gets a number eventually. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Shin. I just want to take a quick moment to acknowledge the proprietor of Seven Day Donuts, Sam. He passed and became a U.S. citizen last week. Right. So if we were all as proud as he is right now, Aww. so get a chance to go by, congratulate him. What's his name? Sam. He's from Cambodia. Please. Thank you. Council Member Tierney? I was just going to confirm what uh, Council Member uh, Mosey said, that yeah, we were given a very strong impression. This is on the to-do list, although I will also say that they were doing some uh, misinformation during that meeting where they also uh, claimed that uh, RDOT was responsible for financing the third entrance, which, which they did not, and that was financed by Mall Mill Citizens. So just kind of want to point out there was a lot of double talk going on. Well, I, I don't know about all that. Um, I wasn't at the meeting. I feel like it was during a conference or maybe I was at the National League of Cities because I do remember talking to, to Scott about it, um, uh, who was there, and I said, take good notes, and he gave me a very thorough brief, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but thank you. Any additional council member comments? Madam City Attorney. No comments this week. Madam City Clerk. No comments. If there's nothing further, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I've got a motion. Do I hear a second? I heard a second. All those in favor? Yes. All opposed, no. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you for your service.